There's been a lot of videos where I've talked about specific things in my home lab, like a server rack or a 3D printer, but I've never done a full home lab tour. Well, actually I did one a few months ago and since then setup has been totally revamped. I have way more equipment now. It's something that home labbers and people like me who like to tinker with stuff always grow up thinking that I'm gonna get something like this one day. I think I'm pretty content with the stuff I have. I'm gonna show you like what I have, what I use, what for, why did I make certain decisions in my home lab on setting some things up? And that may actually help you build your own. I have three desks, one on the left, right here, the brown one and my main desk. Let's start from the left. On the left side, this desk, all it has is stuff like soldering iron, when I'm tinkering a Raspberry Pi or some ESP32 devices. All of that happens here. I got a fan because my office gets really hot. And right above it, I have, honestly, it has a lot of stuff on it. It has stuff from screws, displays, ESP32, breadboard cables, a bunch of stuff I need for maker projects. On this desk, one thing I'd love is this fan. I don't have a ceiling fan in my office, but I have this connected to the smart plug. And I can just say, hey Siri, turn on my office fan. And it turns it on. One of the things I want to do is make a little thing that can rotate this fan towards me. And... It can be running on like a local AI model, sees where the, a human is and turns the fan to the human. But that is a project for future me. This fan may be causing an issue in the audio, so I'm going to turn off. Hey Siri, turn off the office fan. Cool. All right. Now on to the desk that has all of my home lab stuff. Starting from the left side, you've probably seen this in my previous videos. I love this little charging station. It has six USB ports, USB-C, and I have cables like USB-A, Lightning, USB-C, charging for my shocks, earbuds, all of those cables, all of them pretty much live here. Then I have my Unify, as you saw from a previous video. The gateway gets all of the internet in. And then I have an Apple TV. And what this allows me to do is I work out in my office. I like to have the TV on. I have some weights right here. So the TV is pretty good. I put on podcasts, watch YouTube videos, stuff like that. Then moving along, you'll see... The server, which you've probably seen in a lot of my videos, we'll get to it in a second. But a lot of times I need a display, keyboard, and a mouse. I got a cheap setup with the keyboard and mouse from Logitech. It was like 20 bucks. And then this random monitor that I found in a garage sale a long time ago. I have this HDMI cable. Anytime I'm working on a device from the server, I can connect it and use the keyboard and mouse to configure it. Now, moving to the server rack, let's go from top to bottom. On the top, we have the network switch that gives internet to all the Raspberry Pis. These are all Raspberry Pi 5s except this one. This is a Raspberry Pi 2. Then as we move down, I have two mini PCs, the HP and a Dell. These both are running Proxmox and they're in a cluster. Then there's the NVIDIA Jetson. I've been testing local AI models that can translate audio to text, generate a response, and then take that text response, convert that into audio, and say that over a speaker. I'm still working on it. This is not the greatest device to run LLMs on. Even small models, the response time is way too slow. But if I had to run some image models for edge AI on like robotics or make a car so it detects objects and move around, I think for that, this would be really good. But for running LLM, even like 3 billion parameter models, it's not the greatest. The Unify network switch, the 16 port, it has been working fantastically. It gives internet to everything from the access point, running PoE, and runs 50 feet from my office and gives internet to my PlayStation, MacBook, 3D printer, and a bunch of other devices. That's pr pretty much the setup for the server rack. Now to the right, I have this Jackery power station. I have one power cord running from the Jackery to the server rack. Behind it, you'll see two extension cords. And I have these extension cords daisy chain. So one extension cord is connected from the Jackery to the server rack, and then the second extension cord is connected to the first extension cord. It may sound like it's not safe, but I make sure the wattage is not out of control. And right now, if you see on the screen, it's outputting like 134, 150 watts, and this can do about 300 watts. So it's half of its limit. So I'm not worried. So in the event of a power loss, I still will be able to power the entire server rack, gateway, and Wi-Fi motor for about 1.3 hours. Hopefully the power comes back on in less than 1.3 hours. Anytime there's power fluctuations or anything, the Wi-Fi and everything else keeps working and that's the main reason for it. And then as you look up, I got a little storage for some screwdrivers, some things I need to grab quickly. And then 
If you are into tech, a lot of people have this photo frame. It's the original iPhone. I got this from Etsy. Every 10 pieces the maker sells, he raises the price by 10%. Got this a couple of years ago. So it's pretty expensive. Now moving down, this network switch, my last video, I got this one sent from the company. It's just powering all of my personal devices. This is also connected to the main network switch from Unify. As we go to the right, I got a bunch of little things. A weighing machine for 3D printing. I need to know how much filament I have left. A fan I bought for 10 bucks. A label maker, a thermal printer, and just a bunch of like little accessories that I need from a 3D printer. Oh, and a PlayStation that is also powered by the server rack. Now, as we move down, here you'll see a little theme going on. This is my Prusa Core 1. Absolutely love this thing. I've rarely had any failed prints. The only time I've had failed prints are when the filament runs out and I didn't change it in time. As you move to the left, that's a bin with all of my failed prints or things that didn't fit. If I open this up, there's a lot of stuff in here. I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but one day I wanna get a machine that can melt all of these old printed things and create a new filament. I've seen some people do it, but we'll see how that turns out. Why I have this set up this way for the 3D printer is this makes a lot of vibrations, so I didn't wanna keep it on the desk. A lot of times like a print fails or you want to take the remains of a previous print off and put that straight into that bin so I don't have to like trash around here. So bin is very accessible and anytime I need to change filaments, which is often I turn 90 degrees, right here is more filament and I can quickly load it into the printer. Then I have stuff for the printer if I need to take something off the bed, clean the nozzle, all of that put a lot of thought into how my 3D printing setup would be the most convenient and fast turnaround and then over to the left that's the nas that's the nas running true nas scale and it has been working great i've had some issues with true nas on syncing over to the cloud for backing up but other than that the performance of this is great i want more bandwidth but i'm not really constrained this stays in the corner every month or so i take it out clean out the dust and put it back and then the theme for the 3d printer continues i have some tools some additional power tools a lot of filament. I've been stacking up, so I have white, blue, I have ASA, and a bunch of other filament in the back. And then I got this big bin. You see a lot of silica gel. And I have a lot of filament here that I've partially used. I still want to store them. I want to make sure they still stay dry. And I have a little hydrometer that shows. Let me see if I can show you. Oh, yeah, there you go. Currently, the humidity in there is 10%, which is really good. That's what we want to keep it at. The good thing about the silica gel, I got this from Amazon. When it's dry, it's orange, and when it's not dry, it turns dark blue. I take this out, put it in the oven at like 210, 250 Fahrenheit for about three hours. It dries it up, and I put it back in this box, and it keeps all of the filament dry. It's not the most well-sealed box, but the humidity in there is just 10%, and that's all I care about. That's the entire corner of the office where I have my server rack, the monitor to tinker stuff on. All of my 3D printing stuff, so everything in this corner supports the rest of the work that I do from printing stuff, running technology, networking, server applications, deploying things. The whole house gets internet from here. One who wants to charge anything, there will be a cable here. The last thing is my main desk. And on my main desk is my MacBook, my work computer. I got my headphones. This mount for the mic, currently the mic is attached on this little rig I'm recording on. The two Dell monitors, a little light bar on it. I have a little project that I'm working on and I will be updating y'all on this pretty soon. It's really cool. I'm pretty excited about it. iPad that sits right under it. Wireless charger. I put my phone on here. If you have an iPhone, it goes into dock mode and I put my Outlook calendar on it. It's extremely convenient. And then I have the Nufi keyboard, the Nufi V2 Air. I like the keyboard, but if this gets a firmware update, it is a pain in the behind to update this because you have to go through like different applications to install some firmware on it. It's just wild, so don't do that. Then I have a Logitech MX Master 3S. This mouse pad looks terrible for aesthetics, but this thing is super comfortable. I do not get wrist pains anymore because my wrist can stay on this and gives it more support, which is really good. Oh, there you go. I just turned my monitor on. That looks pretty cool. That corner looks pretty cool. A little home pod for some music when I'm working and my Mac and the work computer both docked right here. That's pretty much the tour of my office from soldering station to a giant TV for working out to an entire corner with servers and 3D printer stuff. 
and then my main desk where I work. I hope this gave you some idea of how to set up things. Let me know what you thought about this video. If something was helpful to you, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you want me to dig deeper into something very specific that I have in my setup, and I'll make sure to address that. Until next time, peace.